Hey everyone, welcome back to my classroom studio here. I am Karen with Walsh of Karen's Pots and Glass. Uh, I'm a high school ceramics teacher and a teacher of YouTube uh, tutorial videos. And today's video is on doing peacock technique of glazing. So um, I'm wearing my gloves because I just took it out of the kiln and I wanted to get this shot before my kids come in in a few minutes. So peacock glazing is a fun technique, whereas you have maybe a runny glaze that you apply and it's designed to run a little bit. I actually did two bowls for this video. This one had a base glaze that was a more of a runny one. And um, I'll show it again later in the video, but you can see uh, the very big difference in the effect is from the original glaze that I used. So this was a stable white glaze. This one is uh, Amico's, no, I'm sorry, Laguna Moroccan Sand uh, Robin's Egg uh, MS-15, I believe. And um, they both came out really cool, uh, but this one is probably a little bit more like the peacock eye that people um, are trying to get sometimes. So um, I go over some of the pitfalls, some of the things to watch out for. So uh, enjoy. Um, drop me any questions that you have below. Stay creative and keep potting if you can. So I recommend starting out with a white base glaze or a light colored base glaze. By using a base glaze that's a little bit lighter, when you go to put colors on it, your colors will be more true. Now you can see on this one, I've actually very lightly marked out in pencil where I wanted to have the dots, some of the major uh, areas. I haven't marked everything, but it gives me an idea for my spacing. So I, when I start to add the glaze, I don't have an issue. Now, let's talk a little bit about glazes that have what is referred to as a flux. A flux is just something which helps to lower the melting point of something. So a flux, some, some manufacturers will uh, call things like a, a, you know, a flux glaze. Well, a flux, again, it's, it's something that make something lower the melting point. So a, f a fluxy type of a glaze is going to be one that has more of an inclination to run. Now this white base glaze that I'm using is not uh, going to be a very fluxy glaze. It doesn't have the inclination to run. It's pretty stable. So what I'm also using here is I'm using um, a variety of colors. I have a Laguna Robin's Egg, which tends to be somewhat runny sometimes. I'm using some Coyotes, uh, like Archie's Base and Blue Purple, like the Archie's that I'm just putting on there. Um, those tend to be uh, fairly, in the in the Archie's Base series, they tend to be fairly uh, flexy. They will uh, help to run and allow things to kind of blend together. Now I'm going to be layering some of my glaze colors because again, by layering them and increasing the number of layers, that will help to build up a little bit more of a, a tendency to run. So um, in addition to using my glazes that are normally runny, that I know that they're runny, I'm also uh, using some stable, typically stable glazes too. And I'm trying to get a combination of things. So as I put these on, um, I'm trying to be deliberate with my patterning. I'm not being super duper um, like careful. You can see that it's all got a little bit of a organic kind of, you know, flow to it a little bit. So it's not super careful uh, for this demo. Of course, you could be a lot more careful than I am, but I was just trying to shoot this after school one day. And then uh, now that I have like a lot of my dots, you can see that I had some lines drawn. So what I really want to do with these lines is I'm going to uh, use a bulb syringe. So the bulb syringes are great for um, uh, applying in a line. It has a needle tip and um, there are different things that you can use for a bulb syringe. This one is a cheaper one. I think it's the Pete Pinnell bulb syringe, uh, but the uh, Sim Tools makes uh, a lovely one and I even use things like uh, old hair color bottles at school sometimes. So I'm just doing some lines there because I am hoping that these, these um, the glazes that flux a little bit, that it might create kind of a vertical run down the diagonal of the, the line. So I'm just, you know, trying to increase 
my flow uh, directionally going downward. Oh, and I did not mention, but this uh, bowl is, you know, it's got a nice angle on the sides coming down. So I'm definitely putting this on something that has, you know, a, a diagonal or a vertical angle. Um, now on the exterior, I have to be careful not to get it too close to the base. So I am going to do my design out on the rim uh, in this case. Again, if you put it too close to the base and it's runny and you have much flux, it's going to run and perhaps stick at your foot. So kids, really be um, cognizant, be aware of that. Don't put your things too close to your feet. And again, you want to have it on a surface that has some uh, vertical nature to it, it, even if it's diagonal, you want to be able to have it flow. If you put it on a totally horizontal plate, this technique isn't going to run. Um, so, you know, to get the, the sense of the peacock feather and have that kind of elongate, you want it to run just a little bit. And there I'm just doing bulb syringe a little bit more. So I'm using a combination of coyote glazes on this. Um, I've got, as you can see, I've got the blue purple and the archies. Um, I've got, uh, let's see, pansy purple, cobalt, and uh, I think rainy day. Um, and the Laguna, the Moroccan sand robin's egg. And it looks like I'm just adding a little bit more there. So I'm just trying to get some nice layers so it will hopefully build up and give me some layers. Now I'm going to squirt all of my excess from my bulb syringe back out into the jar and then wash it super well, running clear water through the tip. So kids, if you use those bulb syringes, again, you've got to make sure you're cleaning them well or it will destroy the, the uh, tip of the bulb syringe. Now this is another bowl. Now this one has the base layer of uh, the Laguna Moroccan sand robin's egg. So that's MS-15. I, I love robin's egg. It's a super pretty color. Uh, but as evidenced by the result of this, it didn't really do the peacock look as much as the white bowl. I'm going to show you the, the end result here in just a moment. So just kind of hang on and you'll see the way that this one turned out and uh, the first one turned out. So again, I'm just trying to really put some fluxy sort of colors. Again, um, some of the glazes that have more of a tendency to run. It has a greater, um, like the lower, the, the melting point is lowered. So it will tend to be a little bit less stable uh, than, than some other glazes. And here I'm just putting some lines again, just trying to encourage it. And I'm actually allowing it to run a little bit already on there, which is, is fine if, you know. So this was an experiment. I wasn't expecting the robin's egg would have a lot of distinct detail. And uh, that was pretty accurate, as you'll see in just a minute, because again, robin's egg, it's beautiful on its own. Uh, but when you're trying to paint any detail over the robin's egg, it will, it, it'll just run together. So there we go. And then, of course, I'm wiping my bottoms. Uh, kids, of course, make sure that, you know, you're dry footing. I'm getting the glaze out of the interior of the foot ring there. Um, I just want to make sure that that's nice and clean. Adding a little bit more on my rim just to get a little bit, a little bit more detail. Okay. So now I want to just talk about some of the pitfalls of things you have to note about this. So I kind of put them in order of things that you want to consider and you can see how nicely this came out. Number one, use a lighter base glaze. If you use a darker base glaze, that really limits your colors. Number two, a stable base glaze gives you greater detail. So the white base glaze was stable. Number three, using a glaze with a flux quality will help to increase the running. Number four, use on a vertical or a curved surface inside is safest. You can see mine did run on the outside there. Number five is use multiple layers to help uh, allow the runs to occur. Number six, be careful on the exterior or near a foot. You don't want it to go running down and just, you know, fuse to your patty or your kiln shelf. Uh, number seven, a runny base glaze will not yield detail. So like robin's egg not great as a runny base glaze so just some things to keep in mind and hopefully you enjoy this and uh, learn something from it